Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm here to tell you a story today. It was the Ramadan of 2017 in Johannesburg, a few months after I started working as a photographer. And I pitched a story to an editor saying, I would like to photograph the Tarawi as a contemporary look at Islam in South Africa. And he replied, nobody cares about Muslims in South Africa. If we want something, we'll take it from Saudi or Turkey. I am South African. I am Muslim. I am also a woman of color who grew up in a little town called Ladysmith in Nambiti in KwaZulu-Natal during the dying years of apartheid. So I knew very well what it was like to live under tyranny, to be treated as less than human or worse, or to be invisible. And I was not going to act like we did not exist or matter anymore. How many of you here know that the first Muslims in Southern Africa, some of my ancestors, were taken as slaves and political prisoners from Indonesia by the Dutch in the 1600s? And that because of this history, and in later years, the forced and voluntary migration, that South Africa has one of the most diverse Muslim populations in the world. Or that in the slave communities, it was Islam that became a rallying point to build unity around, and that Muslims were prominent in the anti-apartheid struggle. So I photographed the Tarawi anyway, and put up a picture that night on Instagram. Another editor saw it and called me and asked if I would photograph for the entire month, and we would do a double page spread on the day of the Eid celebration. It was also around this time when a Dutch ambassador saw my work and said, oh, I didn't know there were Muslims in South Africa. How did they get there? <laughs> there were shocked faces in his delegation which mirrored my own, but still not my hurt when he remarked about the white domination and said, oh yes, we did a lot of mischief back there then. Mischief, he called it. It is not just ignorance, it is erasure. So we never truly saw ourselves in our own history books. And this is why the work we do now is so important. With this project, I hope to create something that generations to come can look upon as a source of history and memory. And I've barely even scratched the surface. So far, mostly exploring spaces of worship, of prayer and observance, together and in solitude, where the embodiment of connectedness, of rootedness and reminiscence is visible. Even so, and already I am so grateful and so proud to say that in 2019, this work was acquired by the South African Iziko National Museum and Gallery to be part of the archive and permanent collection, and will now form part of our country's historical visual memory. Thank you. For me, this is a testament to how hungry we are to see ourselves dignified in these public and institutional spaces. Everything that I do with my work and the people who I photograph for stories on themes of social justice, be it access to water and sanitation, or safe housing, or food safety, and gender-based violence, even equal education, plastic pollution, climate change, everything, everything is inevitably and inextricably linked to the structural and systemic legacies of our colonial and apartheid past. And still, every single day, I see resilience. I see strength. I see dignity and pride. The industry of photography is not separate to the industry, to, to the world which we photograph. Not only are so many of us here from these very disadvantaged communities, but the question of what stories get to get told, who gets to tell them, and how, still remains linked to a legacy of access, of privilege, and of power. And still, be it in the field or in this room of narrators, I see stories of triumph, and people who are here and achieving things despite our odds, and this, this is the story of the majority world. 
a favorite verse of mine from Quran can be translated with the meaning, O oh humankind, we have created you from male and female into nations and tribes so that you may know one another, so that we may know one another. To truly know one another, we first have to see each other as equals, even if just in our own humanity. And to see each other, well, we first have to care enough to want to do so. Since that Ramadan in 2017, one of the things that give me, gives me purpose in my work is to never again be faced with the statement that nobody cares about a people. Because to care, well, that is the least, the very least, that we can do. Thank you very much.